Now, after a brief dip today, the dollar rally has resumed. Mike Moran, senior currency strategist at the Standard Chartered Bank, warns that the debt problems plaguing Europe may come calling on the dollar doorstep later this year. He's joining us now from his firm here in New York. Mike, a welcome. And first of all, before we get to what's going to happen later this year, I want to talk a little bit about the action today because there did seem to be some speculation that the Swiss Central Bank was selling its own currency. Just curious to get your reaction on that first off. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been the first time for, uh, in a significant uh, extent, uh, they came in and they've been defending uh, several times the end of last year quite aggressively and uh, they haven't been around uh, earlier in January as much uh, to the, the market's chagrin. So this is a, this is a resumption of uh, some of the more active policies from the Swiss that we're seeing, especially against the euro. Well, why do you think it didn't have more of a sustained effect? Because initially we did see the euro start to rally on this and then it just came right back down. Yeah, again, I, I think it's positioning. Uh, and that, that's one of my uh, more immediate concerns right now um, is that the, the market is so short euro at the moment uh, that you know, I think there is a, a serious risk of a, uh, of a pullback and it's going to be that sort of unwind which is going to be a lot more violent than the next move lower in euro, which we still believe is the case. So uh, I think that's going to be true against the, the dollar, uh, true against the, uh, the Swiss franc and the, the other majors as well. So do you think it's too risky then to, to pile on to this crowded uh, euro short trade? Uh, right now, I certainly think it is. It's, you know, have record uh, um, shorts in, in the euro, uh, certainly from IMM data anyway. Um, but uh, I, I, we still do think that the euro is under a tremendous amount of stress. And uh, uh, we talk about the Greek problem as a, as a three-act play. Uh, I think we've just drawn to the end of the Act 1, which is the actual issue with finding support from the rest of the EU. March is going to be a very important report in terms of progress from the Greeks. And then April and May is going to be some of the refinancing of some of the rollover debt. So those are the next two acts which I think will continue to plague uh, the euro to a greater extent. But uh, we're certainly not, we're not looking to sell euros at this point. We look for a little bit of a break higher, maybe 137, 138 level before resuming the, uh, the selling again. And in the longer term, you know, there has been a little bit of talk about the euro ceasing to exist, perhaps. Do you think there, there's any danger of that after all three of these acts uh, come to a close? Yeah, there's, there's increasingly more reports about how the Greeks are going to be thrown out and the uh, euro is going to dissolve. We're not really in that camp right now. I think that the issues facing Greece and, and indeed some of its other uh, fiscally challenged neighbors uh, you know, will be resolved. It's going to take a lot of time. There is no silver bullet here. Um, but it's going to take uh, many months, perhaps even years, uh, for it to really filter through. There's going to be a lot of fiscal uh, austerity measures which will uh, plague uh, uh, growth. Uh, so I think there, it's not a happy story, but it, it is manageable. Um, but what goes around comes around. Uh, the focus is really Europe and Greece right now. But really, a lot of the other majors have similarly uh, you know, frightening fiscal pictures mm -hmm. in the next two or three years. The well, U.S. Is not, uh, is not immune to that. Well, let's talk about the U.S. I mean, one of the uh, numbers that jumped out earlier this week, of course, is that China is no longer the largest uh, purchaser of treasuries. And so what, I mean, what effect down the road is, is this debt issue going to have for the U.S.? It's you know it's the it's the big uh, gorilla in the room that no one really wants to talk about right now. And uh, like I said, what goes around comes around. I think the focus will come back to the U.S. at some point and the massive debt that's accumulated. We talk about private sector deleveraging, but really, how much of that has actually happened? Most of it has just moved on to uh, public sector balance sheets. Uh, and you know, no one's talking about California as much as they ought to. Much bigger than Greece, uh, and very similar uh, numbers there. So at some point, um, the spot light will will leave Greece will leave Europe and will go back to the U.S. and uh, and that could be uh, that could really cause some consternation for for the U.S. And, and I think for the dollar later on this year. So if not the euro if not the dollar then where are you looking for opportunities right now. I think in the majors you you look for you look for the fundamentally sound uh, economies and uh, what springs to mind uh, especially this morning's data from Canada um, in terms of inflation, uh, starting to pick up a little bit. The unemployment numbers beginning uh, to come down. It looks like the labor market is recovering. Canada could be you know, one of the outperformers in a relative sense in a major uh, space. Um, that said, outside of the majors, you know, we're still looking for great value in emerging market Asia. Again, the debt overhang is, is far less in those areas. So for long-term value, it's going to be some of these Asian economies uh, and indeed some of the Latin Americans who have sold off really, really uh, abruptly. Uh, 
I think there's some value there over the next uh, six to 12 months. Hey Mike, just quickly, what about the British pound? I mean, that's something that uh, hasn't been talked about as much while all this euro stuff is going on, but it's been moving pretty much in tandem with the euro. Do you think that's fair? The distinction with sterling is that you know it, it's not uh, explicitly tied to uh, sort of the, the EU and some of the financial and the fiscal um, constraints there. So from that sense, it's I think it's, it's dodged a bullet if you if you like to put it that way. Um, but ultimately, the, the the issues that face the UK are very similar, perhaps not as uh, um, as huge as they are for for Greece and Spain and Portugal. But uh, with, the, with an election coming around the corner, uh, we're still very um, cautious on on sterling. There's a, uh, I think that is going to be another currency which underperforms ch purely as, a, as, as the fiscal issues domestically and a very weak economy continues to drag on uh, valuations there. So that's actually one of our picks for uh, uh, a sell against some of these uh, higher yielding uh, currencies in the majors as well as the emerging market space. Mike, uh, thanks a lot for joining us. We appreciate it. Mike Moran is a senior currency strategist at Standard Chartered Bank.